So there are a lot of different brands available here in the European market that I'm not used to from back home in the US. But what I've noticed especially are some Chinese automakers coming here with electric vehicles. And of course, in the Netherlands, electric vehicles are really popular. So I was curious, like, what is the quality with these Chinese vehicles? They don't really sell them in the US. Um, Chinese vehicles have a really bad reputation in the US. So I was really curious, what's the quality like? What do these look like? So I'm gonna go check one out and I'm gonna book it through Six Share. I haven't done much research on it. So we'll take a look and see what the Chinese electric vehicles really like. I'm gonna book it now and let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and book it now on Six Share, the iWays U5. There are other Chinese electric brands, but uh, this one on Six Share is the iWays U5. So I'm gonna go ahead and book that and we're gonna check it out. All right, I just booked it. So got about a 15 minute walk and then we're gonna go check it out. So other than seeing these on the road, I literally have never been in one or, or uh, really interacted with it. So let's check it out. Um, first things first, of course, with these six cars is always inspect them for damage. So let's see, there we go. Oh, look, it's got the pop-out door handles. Okay, I'm gonna put this phone away and then open this guy up. So first, literal first impressions here. Well, of course being a six car, it's a little bit dirty, but let me hop in and then we'll take a closer look. All right, so the app said to put my foot on the brake to start it, so let's see. Yeah, okay, wow. That's interesting. No starter button. So that's cool. I know that's quite common with uh, new electric vehicles. Um, yeah, first initial thoughts. I mean, it's pretty spacious in here. Uh, pretty big for a share car in the city, uh, especially in Amsterdam with really, really narrow streets. But it's about maybe a little bit bigger than a Hyundai Tucson. Um, but which is still a decent size. Oh, let's see, let me adjust my seat, power seats, that's nice. I mean, honestly, overall, if you just took a look at it, you wouldn't know that this is a Chinese made, you know, vehicle. It's actually comparable in quality, I think, to most new vehicles out there. So yeah, I think, let's see, I mean, yeah, materials, it's not like a luxury vehicle level of materials but it's decent i mean probably equivalent of like a nissan or something still soft over here steering wheel feels good it's kind of a squircle kind of looks like the the new chevy corvette uh steering wheel really wide screen here kind of a triple weird triple cluster thing here we'll have to check out what that what that does um yeah some interesting hooks here i guess you could hang stuff or is that the glove box no don't see a glove box actually. Interesting. Got bin here. Oh, there's the key. There is a key. Kind of a strange looking plastic key. Basic functions. And then of course with the share cars you have your little charging uh, thing that you can tap on the chargers and then you have the six, uh, six stuff here. Stick that back in there. And there is no glove box. So they put the books down there Let's see if you can see it over here because there's no glove box. So that's really strange and kind of, yeah, a bit inconvenient, I guess. Spot for the phone, buttons here, cup holders. Looks like there's blind spot monitor. This looks like maybe a camera to watch the driver for maybe some automated driving. Blind spot monitors. I think I saw what looked like 360 cam. Let me shift it into reverse. Let's see, yeah, 360 cam. So that's pretty cool. Don't really see that on like a share vehicle very often. So that helps, I guess, with the size. Oh, that's a really, really good quality uh, camera. Better than I expected. Okay, I spent a couple more minutes just kind of playing around with the controls and stuff. First of all, the automatic climate control, which all of the settings are in the screen, which I hate. Um, it's really loud, like it, it turns up the fan a lot more than it should. Um, it was just, you know, the fans were just lower and now it just spun them up for some reason. So I'm going to keep that low. Yeah. All of the climate controls are here. There's pretty much, there's not really any buttons. So all through the screen, screen's okay. It's not as like quick and responsive as I would have liked. Like sometimes it just takes a second to like load stuff. Um, yeah, it's decent. 
It's got Apple CarPlay apparently, I haven't tried it out. There's interestingly some quick settings here. So you can lower, I guess, all of the windows, which is really cool actually. I've never seen that other than like a convertible. Then you can raise them up as well. So that's really cool. Yeah, it looks like it's got the safety features like I mentioned. Everything's here. Got some quick access to, I guess, like the traction control, rear defogger, which won't turn on, I guess, for some reason. But yeah, I mean, it's decent. Like I said, there's a there's some uh, there's a 360 cam. Looks pretty decent. Um, there's a shortcut button here that lets you um, toggle that. So that's cool. These screens are a bit strange. So you you can cycle through a couple different screens here, but I can't do any. I don't think I can do anything with these. I don't think I can do anything with this one. I don't think I can do anything with this one. It just kind of shows radio, tire pressure, which, yeah, cool. But I couldn't figure out how to change it. This only seems to change, uh, yeah, the settings there, volume. The switches look like kind of rip-off Mercedes uh, switches, or maybe they're the same ones. I don't know. Um, quality feels okay. But, yeah, I mean, it's decent, I think. Yeah, you know, I don't know the exact price. I'll look it up and maybe put it uh, on screen right now. But... It's a decent SUV, a car, you know? Um, oh, there's a camera here. That's interesting. Maybe also to watch the driver. And frameless mirror, that's kind of nice. I, I've had that before, I really like that. Um, sound system was okay. Um, so yeah, let us uh, let me mount the GoPro and then start driving around and see what it's like to drive it. All right. <coughs> now the seats are a bit stiff. Uh, it's got this weird shape to it, but uh, it seems, but it seems okay for now. Let's see. Yeah, this is this is probably going to be one of the biggest vehicles I've driven in Amsterdam. Let's see. The steering is really light. Even though I have it in... Do I have it in sport mode? Yeah, it's in a sport mode, but the steering wheel is so light. Maybe I'm just used to BMW. So this has 48% range and it's saying... A 48% battery and it's saying with that 48%, about 156 kilometers. So... I don't know, about 300 kilometers range, best case scenario. I don't know if that's good or bad, but, oh, actually I'm gonna go left because this is a bit of a traffic. Before the bikes come, come on, before the bikes come. All right. Okay, not bad. You don't feel the weight so much. I mean, you know, with these electric vehicles, it's always instant torque. Okay, the brake feels a little bit like grabby, but I think that's just because I'm not used to it. Uh, it's, you know, I'm not a big fan of SUVs, um, I'll be completely honest, I think wagons are a much better choice, but I get it, for most people, the appeal of an SUV having something bigger, um, more space, more practical, nowadays, even for fuel efficiency, they're pretty much on par with cars, so like in the US, sedans are, are dying, everybody wants an SUV, so, you know, electric SUVs are definitely gonna, are definitely gonna be popular. I personally don't care for them. I don't really care for SUVs or maybe if it's a BMW X5 or something, I'd be more inclined. So it's smooth, pretty smooth, quiet. I mean, it's so weird driving something so big on these streets. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more towards the pipe. See what it's like to drive around there. I can't really get into a comfortable seating position. I don't know if that's just me, but it still seems really upright. So I'm gonna drive it uh, a little bit towards the pipe area, a little, and then I'll do one highway run and then let's see what my final thoughts are. So of course, you know, electric vehicles are so quiet, so you hear kind of like a lot of different noises, but I mean, this one's pretty decent um, in terms of the funny electric vehicle sounds. Driving wise, yeah, honestly, you know, as an American, you know, you think of cheap Chinese stuff, <laughs> to be honest, but actually it doesn't feel so cheap. Um, it feels honestly on par with any sort of, you know, Japanese, Korean mainstream brand. I don't know if they have a higher trim maybe, but I definitely wouldn't think it's in competition with like BMW, Lexus, Mercedes, etc. Yeah, it's got blind spot, a little blind spot light. That's nice, nice little feature to have. Okay, adjusted the steering a little bit. I still don't really like the driving position. I don't know if that's just me or because it's an SUV or it's the way that it's set up, but yeah, I just can't quite get comfortable, but you know, that's quite subjective. You don't really feel the size too much so far. Let's see, I'm going into a little bit busier area where it's a little bit more difficult to drive. So maybe I'll be a little bit more nervous there. It's not too wide, which is really the big thing to, to be mindful of. Um, it feels, you know, 
kind of like let's say normal width it's got decent visibility big windows uh, easy to look over you know look to see for bicycles that's always super important here yeah this steering is so soft I mean yeah for everyday driving it's good but this definitely would not be fun yeah so on these streets it's actually okay it's quite easy to drive let me see how easy it is to park I'm curious if so reverse I'm sure it's got maybe some parking assistance. Okay, we got 360 camera. Ooh, a little bit close right there in the front. This is always the real test. How easy is it to park? Camera is really helpful. Oh, I can see the curb there. A little, a little bit there. That's the rear parking sensor. Let's see, we got our front parking sensors. Oh, no front parking sensors. Interesting. You know, you have the camera, which is super helpful, but I would, I really like front and rear parking sensors. Having that kind of full visibility is, is super helpful from a sensor. You know, the camera can kind of skew the perspective to really tell how close you are, and every centimeter counts. Okay, I'm gonna pull out and let's see. Let's continue driving. I'm gonna take it onto the highway next, and then we'll see how it does at faster speeds in sport mode and instantly it sharpens up Ooh. it's not neck breaking torque but you know electric vehicles it's always surprising that instant torque is is pretty addicting and okay, I'm going a hundred kilometers an hour just over a hundred definitely hear the wind noise uh, I don't know if that's coming through the microphone a little bit but louder than I would have expected but um, yeah, again, I don't have the radio on. Maybe with the radio, it would be different. Also, electric vehicle, you don't have an engine making sounds. So, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't take this on the Autobahn or I wouldn't, uh, you know, really push it on the Autobahn. I mean, it's electric vehicle anyway, so you shouldn't be doing that. But, yeah, it's comfortable on the highway, I guess. I'm sure with the adaptive cruise control lane keeping features it would be fine, but I mean, yeah, again, decent vehicle, nothing too sporty, but quality wise, handling wise, it feels fine, uh, feels perfectly acceptable. Uh, you know, I don't think of this like a cheap Chinese car. I think this is a pretty decent car. And I think the Chinese brands have really come a long way. Their partnerships with existing automakers has really helped with that. And, um, you know, they're really stepping the game up. And I think within the next couple of years, they can really be seen as one of the mainstream uh, automakers. Here in Europe, I mean, they're doing pretty well. I've seen a lot of the Lincoln Co. SUVs, which are based on Volvo XC40s. Um, obviously, I've seen a lot of these Iways U5 vehicles because Six Share is using them. I've seen pe private people use them. Um, I think they're pretty affordable. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a strong competitor in the in the ev market you know it remains to be seen what the long-term reliability will be for these but you know initial impressions yeah not bad so i think you know if the chinese ev makers want to expand to the us i think there are some people that you know this would appeal to in terms of comfort features quality in terms of the exterior styling, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but you know, I think styling is always subjective, so your mileage may vary. So, is the Iways U5 a cheap Chinese car? Um, no, I actually think it's a pretty decent car. I think for the majority of people, it's a decent EV. It's an SUV. Um, so, you know, with the SUV craze, people will will like that. For car enthusiasts, by no means is it anything to to really pay attention to. But I think this is really important because the Chinese automakers are really stepping their game up, like I said. And this is a really good contender. And maybe we'll see these in the US and Canadian markets, let's see. But for now, I think it's a pretty decent uh, car. So I'm pretty impressed by the Chinese automakers now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm really curious to get your thoughts. Um, do you think that the Chinese vehicles such as Lincoln Co and Iways and Xpeng, um, many of the others, do you think they're good vehicles? What do you think about the styling? and who knows about the long-term reliability. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm curious to find out. Until next time, thanks for watching.